Hello, welcome to Your Simple Golf Swing. I'm Matt. You may notice I'm dressed a little bit different today, and that's because I'm going to be doing some work on my hitting area, my little platform that I have back here for my personal driving range. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be converting this to the wood platform that it is right now into a concrete slab. And I'm going to be using something that's called the dry pour method. Now, there may be some concrete people out there that are going to cringe when they see me do this dry pour method but I've seen a lot of videos done on this on YouTube you can check it out it's it's a sound good method for pouring concrete now I want to talk a little bit about why I'm doing this why I'm converting this and why I built this wooden structure in the first place uh, I'm doing this in hopes that I might inspire some of you guys out there to build your own little platforms and your own little setup like I've got here in the, in the backyard so you can work on your swing more often and, and with a lot more convenience than going to the range or whatever. When I originally put this in, I wasn't entirely convinced that this is where I wanted this setup to be in my yard. I had just recently had a pool put in and put down a bunch of sod and everything in I wasn't sure, is this where I want this permanently? Well, it's been almost three years now, and I've decided, yep, this works out fine. It hasn't gotten in, in the way, and in, in, it has not gotten in the way of our activities out in our backyard or anything. It's not an eyesore, can't be seen from the, uh, the street or anything. Another thing that, that caused me to use wood uh, in my original plan here was the pouring of the concrete. Now. A five by six area here isn't quite enough to have poured concrete delivered. It's just not cost effective, and a lot of people, a lot of uh, cement companies won't even do it for such a small area. Uh, but another thing is hand mixing. It's going to it's going to take me about somewhere around 20 60 pound bags. And if you know anything about concrete, you know when you're mixing a bag of concrete by yourself, you're only going to be able to do about a five gallon bucket at a time. So you've got to do that 20 times and you've got to do it quick because those first few bucketfuls or bags that you've mixed up that you've poured in there, it's going to start to cure, you know, pretty quickly. And you're probably not going to get all the way done with those 20 bags before those first few bags are hardening. And, and that just makes it more difficult to work with. Uh, so that kind of deterred me and, you know, I looked at all kinds of different ways, uh, better ways to mix bags by hand, doing it yourself. And then when I came across the dry pour method, you know, I watched a lot of videos on it. Uh, people are getting great results. That was my answer. Once I, once I saw that, that's when I decided, okay, it's time. This wood, when I put this wood down again, I didn't know how permanent it was going to be. So I didn't. I didn't go through the expense of, of buying pressure treated, you know, wood. I just, I just bought some basic two by sixes. They're getting old now. They're starting to not really rot, but they are weakening. I've got some areas that I can feel in this pad that I've built that are kind of starting to sag a little bit. So it's time for me to go ahead and dismantle this and pour a permanent concrete slab. Now, I'm only going to go three inches deep. I don't need to go real deep because this is just, it just needs to support my weight and my swing and this pad, you know, cushions or this, this mat that I have is a really high quality mat and it, it cushions the blow of the, the golf club. So I, I'm only going to go about three inches. Um, going to do the dry pour, not going to use any rebar, no, no sense, no reason to use that. I'm going to use high strength, uh, say crete, um, concrete mix. And it should work out pretty well. So I'm going to take you along with me on my journey so you can decide whether or not this is something you want to do in your own backyard. First thing that I have to do is I have to dismantle my existing platform. So anyways, that's what we're up to. Let's get underway. Okay, so I have my form. I've got the ground leveled out. I use my little tamper here to to tamp it, especially around the edges. Um, this is gonna be three inches thick. It is six feet, six feet wide, and it's five foot four inches deep. And there's a reason I went five four, is because my mat is five or four four 
deep this will give me a foot at the end to be able to place my bucket of balls and place my golf bag um, at a nice level spot so we're ready to go I'm about ready to start the dry pour and here's what it looks like if you see I've got it off center from my hitting area because um, I want to be able to hit into the center of the net area so the driver will be all the way to the right side and then the irons will be in the middle so this should work out pretty good it's about where I got I want it and it's about where I had my um, wooden platform so at this point in the video what I intended to do is I had intended to show show you how I actually poured the dry concrete in and how I did the screeding. Um, I did a rookie mistake. I thought I hit the record button. I went ahead and I filled in my entire frame. I did all the screeding and then I went back to replay the video and I found out that I didn't hit record. So rookie mistake. So what I'm going to do is after my big reveal of the finished product, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through that skating process and, and the pouring process. I'll just explain to you and, and kind of show you how I did it. Um, it's not something I could go back and redo to videotape it because, you know, once you pour that stuff down and screed it, uh, you, there's there's no taking it back up and, and redoing it for videotaping. So apologize for that. There are some great videos out there that show you the entire dry pour method. I'm just trying to show you how my project here turned out and it's kind of my golf specific one. Uh, so anyways, let me take you on to show you what it looks like after I did the screening and the steps that I had to take after that. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. I just got done filling in the whole form, screeding it, and now I'm gonna put some finishing touches on it before I get it wet. I'm gonna go over it with a roller, paint roller, and do some edging. So far, so good. Looks all right. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is a launch pad for my... <laughs> This is giving it a nice texture and this isn't making it real smooth. What it's doing is it's kind of giving it almost a sandpaper texture so that it won't be slippery at all. And I'm just letting the weight of the roller do it, not pushing down at all. Don't want to add anything to it. Just going to go back and forth a few times. Don't care much about that back edge. That's that clumped up area there is beyond the wooden frame. So get this really nice like this. Come back in an hour and put some more water on it. Okay, so I've done a couple of uh, mistings. It's starting to harden up on the top real good. So now, um, you know, after I did the mistings, I washed my truck to get all the dust off of it, went, took a shower, ate some dinner. It's been about an hour now and uh, it's curing well, hard on the top. So now we switch to shower and according to the instructions, we should water this two times. We should water it once every hour, but water it two times for every inch of thickness. So I've got um, 
three inches of thickness here, so six waterings. Uh, here in Florida, I don't know if I need to wait a full hour between waterings. I see a couple of imperfections, but that's fine. Like I said, this is just, I'm gonna put my golf mat on this, my, my uh, artificial turf hitting thing, and uh, it'll be fine. Nice and level. That's what I care about. Just level. Just wet it down real good. And what this will do is that dry cement down below underneath it. It's just going to soak this thing up with kind of a wicker effect. Okay, I can come out here in 30 minutes and this is going to be dry. And that concrete down below, the concrete down below will start to suck this water up and it'll eventually make its way all the way to the bottom. Now I thought about doing this kind of in layers and you know put down a bottom layer first, get it wet then put some more on top and get it wet but one of the guys that does this a lot online, uh, he's got a lot of videos on this. Um, he says that if you put this stuff down even on wet ground, the concrete is going to pull that moisture up towards the top. And when you go to do the screeding, it's going to cause some problems because you're going to have wet spots. So he recommends that you keep it completely dry until you've got it set up the way you want it and then you start wetting it um, one uh, caution that I, I forgot to mention when I started was do this with wearing a mask um, it was windy today so I was able to pour the concrete and all the dust just kind of flew off that way so I didn't wear a mask um, but I recommend you wear a mask you don't want to breathe this this dust at all and I rinse off my my ball thing it's got concrete all over it but but anyways um, there you have it so my plan here is I'm gonna come out here like I said it's supposed to be every hour come out watered again um, three inches thick so that would be six waterings um, so I'm gonna do that throughout the evening and probably going to wait a good 48 hours before I actually take the forms off um, you can take them off after 24 hours but I just I want to be sure everybody else online that is doing this is doing it with quick read quick Crete and that's not available in my area I had to use Secrete. but from what I understand as long as you're using a Portland based cement mix or concrete mix uh, you should be good and Secrete is Portland based. I checked, so it should work out. There you have it. We'll uh, we'll check on this in another hour and put some more water on it. And I'll keep doing that throughout the evening, and then uh, I'll wait a couple of days. I'll remove the forms, and I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end. See you in a bit. Okay, here's a moment of truth. I'm going to start taking off the mold and the frame here. If I can get my drill to cooperate with me. It gave me problems yesterday. I've been watering it off and on all day. And it should be good place now with this thing. Oh, look at that. So, here we have it. 
nice and wet all the way through to the bottom. That looks nice. I'm very pleased with this. Come over here in the sunshine. Look at that. That is nice. Still moist all the way through. Gonna probably, although I'm eager to hit on it, probably gonna wait couple more days let that cure all the way turned out very nice very happy with it yes very happy indeed so that's the dry pour method a lot easier than trying to mix a whole bunch of bags and do it as quickly as I can because I had to do it by myself my health my wife helped me a little bit with the screening but um, and I filmed that, but something happened in the video, it didn't work out. So, there we have it. Okay, so we did the big reveal. You see how it turned out. Now let me go back and tell you exactly how I poured and did the screening real quickly. So, the frame was obviously where you see the slab right now. And I started in this corner here and I took 60 pound bags of, of concrete mix. I use Say Creek. That's all there's, as I said before, that's all there is available in my area, but it worked out great. And I, I poured bags along this end here, all the way across, and I poured it higher than the frame. And it's important that you go a little bit higher than the frame because then you're going to take a two by four. This is six feet wide. I took an eight foot two, two by four, and I started at this end and I started moving it back and forth like this while I was moving it forward. As you're moving it forward, remember I poured it higher than the mold, so it's pushing all that forward and it's dumping down into the frame as you're going, just a little bit above. What's happening with the screeding is all the aggregate or the gravel is settling down below the surface and the cement powder is coming up to the surface just a little bit so you get a smoother top to it and you don't have a bunch of gravel and rocks and then you know as your board if you're as you're moving that board back and forth and moving it this way you will push those piles and and then you get to a point to where you need to grab some more bags and then pour it across like this and you just keep coming across and screening as you go Going back, when you see little pockets that aren't full, grab a handful and dump it in there, take the board back, screed some more, keep moving forward, keep then pour another line all the way across, screed, 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 and just keep on doing that all the way till you get to the end. Another beauty about this that I, I didn't mention is you don't have a bunch of unused wet concrete when you're done that you need to clean up and dispose of because you use exactly the amount that you need now when you look at this close up you'll see I got a little bit of extra stuff around the edges that can easily be picked up like this stuff right here real easy to pick up and and I'll clean that up later so that's the screening the point in the screening process again there are great videos online uh, look for Cajun country living uh, it's a guy and his wife. They do a lot of this, a lot of dry pour projects, and they're really thorough in how to do it. So it's, it's really cool. Okay, so let's get on to the next part of the video where I test it out. Okay, so we've got my brand new driving range here with my freshly dry poured concrete slab. Made it a little bit bigger, so I've got room for the bucket to sit on here nice and square, and... I have a place to set my golf bag so it doesn't uh, fall over. I was setting it on boards and just in the dirt and stuff and the wind would blow and it would fall over. So I made this one a little bit bigger so I got a place for the bag. So now here's where the rubber meets the road. We're going to give it a try. Hitting it with an iron. This mat that I've got here is nice and strong, nice and thick. So you, I won't really be feeling you know the concrete down below give it a nice little whirl here now that felt nice comes off there real nice so there you have it the dry pour method I recommend it for anybody that wants to try to pour their own little slab uh, all by themselves is there's virtually zero cleanup 
you don't have a bunch of dirty buckets and dirty tools that you got to clean up everything is poured dry and then once you've got it set you just start to wet it no dirty tools nothing uh no dirty clothes you just get a little dust on you and that's it so there you have it dry pour method successful love it so if you're interested in getting a cage like i have there's a link down in my description and also a good link for or a link for this really good high quality mat um, heating mat that's in the description as well and i even got a link in there for these little rubber tees so anyways go out there and try it yourself you'll love it you'll love the results this is going to serve me for a very long time thanks for watching